There is a consensus. This is perhaps the most serious problem. Uh, there is a near consensus among the policy leaders in Washington, both Democrats and Republicans, that uh, are encouraging the war fever with Iran. You have people like Barack Obama, who just recently said that all options are on the table with respect to Iran. Those are the magic words. Those are the magic words that every front-running candidate has to use to please uh, APAC, the, the American-Israeli lobby. So they have to say those words. Well, they don't understand that those words have dramatic implications in the Middle East, that we can't, if we keep rattling these sabers, we are encouraging instability. As Mike Gravel said the other night in the debate among the Democrats, he said, look, no option off the table means a code word for a nuclear attack on Iran. We still have to make it clear that Iran having a nuclear weapon is absolutely unacceptable. We have to try to prevent that at all costs. I think no president, no responsible president would ever take any option off the table. Iran is a, an adversary. Their pursuit of nuclear weapons poses a grave threat to us. The Iranian government is overconfident because the country is solidly behind it, mobilized on the nuclear issue. Most government critics would self-censor during a confrontation. Their government also knows it could turn Iraq from a quagmire to a nightmare. It understands that if attacked, it could close off the 20-mile wide Straits of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf, where most of the world's oil tankers must pass through. Oil prices would double overnight, devastating economies around the world. And not least, it knows that most Americans are against Bush and don't want war with Iran. So the danger is that the situation will escalate. The U.S. goes to the U.N. for sanctions, expecting Iran to back down. Iran sees this as in the tradition of imperial ultimatums, knowing that those who give in are seen as traitors and those who stand up to the U.S. are seen as heroes. Iran withdraws from the NPT and proceeds full steam ahead with the nuclear program. The U.S. and or Israel might then have limited airstrikes, claiming it will only be a few days with no civilians targeted, thinking then that Iran will back down. Or we might see a much larger bombing campaign especially since we don't know where all the hidden nuclear sites reside, and since there is an expressed interest in taking out the entire Iranian military. The result would be mass destruction of the country, countless innocent lives, and a new generation of jihadi freedom fighters. Again, this is not a big problem for Washington. Iran's response would not be to directly attack the U.S. or Israel, knowing it would mean the instant destruction of Iran. Instead, it would likely hit back where it has the upper hand, in Iraq and Afghanistan. The only way to triple the number of U.S. troops is by reinstituting the draft. So what should the U.S. do instead of escalating war? We should not allow to become numb to the suffering of ordinary people. We should not allow killing by just blink of an eye. It's very important to, to lead by an example. I personally believe that, 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 that the U.S. ought to lead the entire world by an example. Resolving all global issues through persuasion, not fear. Through cooperation, not confrontation. In the First World War, the major ca casualties were combatant soldiers. But as the wars have increased over the years, the major, the major casualties, the major loss of life have been non-combatants, have been civilians. And therefore, I don't think one can anymore justify wars unless it's absolutely necessary as a, as a defense because your country's being attacked. There's a, there's a wonderful phrase by um, Howard Zinn, and he said, no flag is large enough to cover the shame of innocent people killed in war. And I think that's really what we have to keep in mind. That has to be what motivates us to stop these goddamn wars. A war would be unjustified, uh, first off, because there are many other ways to 
try to uh, deal with the situation in Iran without going to war. So we have international mechanisms uh, such as uh, having uh, mutual support from the nuclear weapons powers and from the nuclear wannabes uh, to be able to work the issue of the Iranian nuclear program out through diplomacy and, again, uh, by having uh, mutuality in terms of respect for the treaty, whereby the nuclear weapons powers would lead by example. And sanctions, even, which is not diplomacy. Sanctions are an offensive act that will not bring uh, reduced tension. Um, we, the United States, has used nuclear weapons. We are violating the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. We are violating, I think, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. We are on the verge of wiping out international law as a basis for governments in conflict not going to war. We have over 10,000 nuclear weapons. We have by far and away the largest military in the world, and we think we're exceptional. We think that we are not bound by international law, and history tells us that every country that treats itself as exceptional eventually gets into big trouble. The Germans thought they were exceptional. Uh, before that, the British thought they were exceptional. And over and over again, go uh, governments and peoples that think that they are the chosen one, uh, that they, uh, the laws of uh, international conventions don't apply to them, uh, eventually they do get their comeuppance. We have to become less exceptional in our attitudes towards these countries and a little bit more appreciative of their history. That has not happened. Unfortunately, that's going to require a significant change of consciousness. We can end the threat to the U.S. if we end the threat we make to others. We must end the U.S. threat to Iran. End the sanctions. Live up to our end of the NPT and stop developing new weapons. And reduce the ones we have. Sit down and negotiate. But in order to achieve a lasting solution against imperialist aggression, both our own and any powers that arise in the future, sooner or later, we need to have fundamental changes in support of international law and justice. We should make the UN Security Council a rotating body with no permanent members, not allow any country to have veto powers, and we need to accept the authority of the World Court. Intervention should only be allowed according to the rules of international law set by the UN. The US should withdraw from Iraq, Afghanistan, and the rest of the Middle East and pay reparations. We should end US contracts so Iraqis can rebuild Iraq. We should help Israel and Palestine achieve peace by not vetoing the UN resolution to return to pre-1967 borders. We must renounce the U.S. strategy of global military and economic empire. <laughs>